Hey everyone, it's Dr. Rick, and today's unboxing is on berberine. This is berberine. It's an herb that has been used in China for a long time, and it is an herb that has a tendency to help with elevated glucose or elevated cholesterol. Uh, you'll see a lot of uh, posts on uh, YouTube for the, uh, the use in polycystic ovarian syndrome, and that is fantastic. If you don't know what polycystic ovarian syndrome is, I think I've done a video on it, but uh, it's essentially too much testosterone and um, also too much insulin. So why would I want my patients to use it? Well, if they have polycystic ovarian syndrome, this is entry level before we go on to medicines or uh, other things. Uh, but hmm, look at that. It's orange colored. That's odd. I wonder if that's from the, that's gotta be dye from the pill. I'm going to have to look up uh, where the dye comes from. Or it, it might not be the dye from the outer covering of the capsule. It might actually be the uh, color of the plant. So I will look this up later and post it down below. Or maybe I'll dovetail it to the video. But so, uh, yes, berberine can be used uh, classically for helping with lowering the uh, glucose levels in pre-diabetics or insulin-resistant patients. So with insulin resistant patients, you might not have an elevated glucose, especially if you're entry level. So when I mean entry level, that means that was, it's just been discovered or no one's ever found problems with your glucose before, but Sagil did an insulin level. I like to do uh, baseline morning insulins, fasting, 12 hours. I also like to do the glucose and hemoglobin A1C. Hemoglobin A1C is the classic one that we go uh, the next step when we have a slightly elevated glucose higher than 99. But um, I found that a lot of patients that I used to see over the years uh, had normal glucose levels, but I was suspicious that they were a problem or going into a problem. And then I did hemoglobin A1Cs and eh, maybe 50% would show that uh, tag them as being early prediabetes. So there's diabetes, there's prediabetes, and then there's early prediabetes. And that's just classification I came up with. But honestly, to me, it's either your normal or your abnormal. Uh, I don't know why um, the classification gets to that point. It might be to not insult the patient or not to scare them off. But honestly, if we're going to have a heart attack, you want to get rid of anything past normal when you're healthy. If you wait till you're unhealthy or till the disease is manifested and dig dug down deep, it might be tough to reverse your crap or the things that got you there. So this is mostly for my not so bad guys and or my folks that are well controlled on medicines but want to get off the medicines or my early finds and early finds are usually going to be early successes and those are my warriors so berberine at about 600 milligrams twice a day should be good i like to use it instead of metformin Metformin is good, and I'll put a link down below as far as the benefits of metformin. Even my longevity community is using metformin because of its anti-cancer effect. I think it is good. I've seen some bodybuilders use metformin to help, depending on the time of day and whether they're building down or tearing up, uh, but I'm not sure that it's really proper to use it that way. Uh, however, in my insulin-resistant patients or my pre-diabetic patients or my regular hardcore diabetes patients that are making spectacular headway, this is a great thing to use twice a day. And I put some, now, unfortunately, a lot of the NIH um, studies on PubMed are from China. It's not unfortunate, but I don't know the schools in China that put the research out. There's one of these studies that came from Italy, but uh, we'll go through it now. So I want you to, if you're interested, and here's the thing, I'll show you in a couple, one of these things, the downside is low. So one of these is really decent with regards to showing mechanism of action, but the downside is low. If the downside is low and you're doing your best with a healthy nutrition practice, maybe a well-formulated ketogenic diet or a vegetarian diet that you formulate very well or a dialed in exercise program, regardless, this is not going to hurt. It'll probably help. So this is the study that talks about the mechanism of action. So I'll flash it real quick and then we'll move all forward. So uh, this one in particular talked about uh, how it improved the, um, the way the endothelial, the lining of the blood vessels responded to uh, elevated glucose. 
So you have to know that when you're uh, insulin resistant or pre-diabetic or it used to be called insulin or glucose intolerant patient, um, you're, you're, the bottom line is your glucose levels are too high for whatever reason. Either you eat too much, your insulin's not uh, working because you're resistant to it, or you have a problem with uh, insulin from the pancreas if you're type 1 diabetes. But something is not uh, allowing the glucose, the fuel, to get in from the vascular space, the blood vessels, into the cell. And it has to get into the cell to be used as fuel. If it just circulates around the bloodstream, it doesn't help. In fact, it hurts. If it, too much glucose uh, showers the blood vessels, it irritates and chops or uh, sands down. If you've ever sanded wood, it sands down the lining of the blood vessel. And that's not good to do that to a living thing. So when you do that, so it, it, it does work. They die, they found that it worked to decrease fasting or postprandial glucose, which is good. That means after eating glucose measurements. Uh, this was a, also a China study that talked about how it benefited from uh, not only the glucose, but losing or lowering LDL cholesterol. So my guys that have metabolic syndrome or my guys with elevated cholesterol too, positive effects in lowering LDL. LDL is the heart attack cholesterol, for those of you who believe that cholesterol leads to uh, narrowing of the coronary arteries. I'm going to do a video tomorrow that will present my um, thesis on, not thesis, but my argument for glucose will actually be the thing that causes the cholesterol to get stuck and irritate the lining, and that causes plaque formation, but we'll just keep it at berberine for now. So this is another study from China. Uh, again, underpowered, I think it was like 32, well, the, most of these were underpowered in China, but uh, underpowered, but it showed that you know, those of you that take uh, simvastatin or cholesterol medicine, it helped. When you used a combination of berberine and the cholesterol medicine, the combination worked better than the single units alone. Berberine helped to lower LDL, simvastatin, the cholesterol medicine, helped to lower LDL, the combination of both together definitely help to lower LDL. And if you can, if you're just going by metrics, you lower your LDL, technically the cardiologist will be happy, even if you have a stent. So um, moving forward, a stent in the heart, that's uh, angio. When you have a heart attack nowadays and it's early, you can go to the emergency room, have crushing chest pain, 10 out of 10, can't breathe, you're about to die. They find that you have elevated enzymes. They find you're having a heart attack on the EKG, the heart tracing, and they call in the code or the team that gets you to the cardiology suite. And a cardiologist meets you. They put an art, they put a catheter in your artery. They see where the narrowing is. They find it and then they open it up. And then you go from 10 out of 10 crushing chest pain to zero pain. And it's fantastic. You're, you're saved at that point in time. And they watch you for a little while and they keep you a day or two, but that's great. But uh, sometimes the reversal, that quick of pain, doesn't really leave a mark on, I got to make a lifestyle change. It just says, okay, you got a stent, see you later, control your cholesterol, watch your blood pressure, see you in three months, follow up with your primary care doctor. And then the weight isn't changed, the eating habit's the same, so, versus a bypass. Most of my guys that go through my bypass really arduously suffer and they rebuild themselves versus the stent. They kind of go in the emergency room, stay overnight, they go home. It's like, I'm fine, I don't have any chest pain anymore. So it is good, but in a way it's, it's not so good. So uh, this is another study that talked about uh, adult respiratory or acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS. And uh, those of you who are following the COVID thing in New York, a lot of people that get on uh, uh, ventilators, if they're that bad, they usually don't come off ventilators because of this picture that was almost like ARDS. In fact, that's where they got SARS from, severe respiratory distress syndrome. But uh, in uh, people, they found a berberine in people with, uh, in mice, I'm sorry, in mice, this is an animal study, in mice that they induced, I don't have to be around this, I mean, I'm looking around the corner, uh, in mice that they induced ARDS, or uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome, the berberine, if it was preloaded in those mice that they induced the ARDS, uh, they tolerated the ARDS better. In fact, they didn't go into ARDS, which is has a lot to say that the mouse, the mouse that got the berberine had a, this has a protective effect somewhere on the endothelium. And it always comes down to that. If you think about it, all these diseases, whether it's diabetes, elevated cholesterol, hypertension, uh, it they all lead to eventually a narrowing of the arteries and either it chokes off the kidneys, you get dialysis, chokes off the heart, you have a heart attack, 
chokes off the brain, you have a, a, a stroke. So when you turn 60 or 50 in the United States with all the comorbid problems, again, alluding to why I think we have, uh, versus the rest of the world, we have a younger population that's not doing well with COVID because we have entitlement and a lot of diseases that we're just carrying along and not doing anything for. So when you, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with medicines. I think they're very important to control the disease as is at that point in time that it's found in its most worst presentation, but you still got to flip over and try to get rid of the effects that cause that crap uh, and reverse it so you can get off all the medicines and not need another stent and not have a stroke again. So um, if this can help with protecting the blood vessels, bingo. This might be the entry level. I don't. I wouldn't say if you have a stroke, just take berberine, or if you have a heart attack, just take berberine. But if we're bound, or if we're headed to that direction, get on it now, so you won't have that problem later on. So, uh, this is just a picture. Hopefully, you can see this. This is a picture of a blood vessel. I mean, a blood red blood cell. This is the lining of the blood vessel, and this is something called a fuzzy glycocalyx. Think of it as a slime layer, and I'm going to talk about this probably tomorrow, but this is really important. This slime layer, when it's gone, this is gone and rubbed off because of chronic exposure of elevated glucose, chronic exposure of oxidized LDL, that's the bad cholesterol. So those of you with an LDL higher than 100, that's, I'm trying to chip this away. Uh, if you have diabetes, that LDL got to be, it's got to be lower, 80. If you have had a heart attack, that LDL has got to be lower. And again, uh, Sinatra in her book said it doesn't have any correlation. I think it's a good metric to follow, especially if you have nothing else to go by. So uh, uh, whether I agree with uh, the cholesterol myth or not, doesn't matter. But if you have a metric, reverse the metric crap. And then hopefully you'll, reserve, you'll be reinforcing that you're reversing the disease. But that is the blood vessel without, an endo, without a glycocalyx. And that's when you have red blood cells and or get to, to through the uh, capillary wall, but you also have a lot of crap coming through the capillary wall, causing that smooth muscle hypertrophy, irritation to the capillary wall, and then the beginning of a plaque. You don't want to have irritation to the capillary wall. That's one of the reasons you use uh, omega-3 fish oil. Uh, but that's also another reason to lower glucose, maybe get on a ketogenic diet, or just take berberine. So uh, this isn't the all end all. You have to add the lifestyle to it. Healthy lifestyle is very important with this. And so you don't need this later on. Uh, this final one is just to present a spoiler alert that I'm going to be doing something on a glycocalyx. But uh, this is a, a hypothesis that eventually the reason for um, placking and damage and all the things I just mentioned, stroke, dialysis, heart attack, is because of damage to the endothelium. And I'll present this tomorrow in a in another tutorial, but for now, I'd say this is a thumbs up. I like berberine, uh, innocent, zero side effects, if anything, and you can use it with your metformin if you're metformin already, or even with your SGLP2 uh, or your injectable insulin-like medicines or your insulin. You just have to work with your doctor. So don't just take this alone. Talk to your doctor. I say this is nice. Uh, this is about 1,200 milligrams per two capsules. I'd say one capsule twice a day at 600 milligrams twice a day should be good enough. I do it for about three months and recheck numbers, including uh, random insulin in the morning and see how it goes. So if you have your experience about how to use berberine, and, and this would be the same way uh, to one capsule twice a day or 600 milligrams twice a day. This was approved by Consumer Lab, by the way, as being perfect and lowest price. So if you have your ways that you take or use uh, berberine, whether it's for prediabetes, insulin resistance, or polycystic ovarian syndrome, put them down below your experience. And if you had any side effects, otherwise I'll see at the next unboxing. Hey everyone, as a corollary, I found out that berberine is actually yellow colored. So the yellow color on the cotton that came in the packing is because of not the capsule, not the dye, but the plant itself. In fact, I found out that the berberine plant sometimes is used as yellow coloring or yellow dye for clothing. So don't be worried. I'm just curious if this causes yellowing of the poop. So if you've had any Put your comments down below if you don't mind, anonymously, if you've had any problem with yellow poop. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you at the next video.